there, YouTube. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Kelly from CompTIA, and we're live from our headquarters locations in Downers Grove, Illinois. Today I have a guest and a really interesting topic that I think you'll all be excited to hear about. You want to introduce yourself to YouTube? Yes, I'm Patrick Lane. I'm the Director of Product Management for CompTIA. I manage our cybersecurity certifications, <laughs> rather Security Plus, Pentest Plus, CISA Plus, which is the CompTIA Security Analyst, exam as well as CASP plus which is the CompTIA advanced security practitioner exam. Some pretty f important exams in our portfolio so thanks for taking the time to do this. We've talked a little bit about some of these different exams in the portfolio, what they test, what they offer, the job roles that they certify people for, but I thought today would be a good opportunity, end of the year, take a step back and look at all of these things as they work together. So. Some people may not have heard about the CompTIA Cybersecurity Career Pathway, which is you know, how all of these elements fit together for a career. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about what is the Cybersecurity Pathway? Sure, the Cybersecurity Career Pathway from CompTIA, it is a career path in cybersecurity from zero to 10 years of knowledge, skills, and abilities. That means if you were to take an exam within it, Essentially, that would be at that point in your career, that's what, be, that's what you would know. And so these certification exams are, are very important because if you pass one, you've proven that you have the ability, the knowledge, you know, skills, uh, abilities, and tasks of someone who's been working in either IT or cybersecurity for you know, two years, uh, three years, four years, 10 years. Um, it really gives people a head start uh, on their careers if they're starting out, and it allows people to validate their current skills to their employers if they currently have a job. And so the pathway, as I said, zero to 10 years, uh, you can jump in at any place you want. So if you've been working in IT for five years, you, know, you may wish to jump into CASP, for example, the Advanced Security Practitioner exam. Um, but if you're just starting out your career, you probably want to start with um, some of the simpler certs. So let's start and just focus on those uh, core certifications quickly for the cybersecurity career pathway. It would start out with uh, a survey course, and this would be uh, ITF Plus, which is uh, Internet Fundamentals Plus. It's an excellent course for knowing how to uh, look at um, IT from three different perspectives, you know, software development, uh, infrastructure, cybersecurity, and you really get to see which part of IT you might like. Right. Or might not <laughs> like. <laughs> which is just as important at the yeah. beginning of your career. <laughs> and so it's an excellent way to decide where you want to go with your career. If you want to go in infrastructure or cybersecurity, then, um, and even programming for that matter, anybody in IT mm -hmm. uh, could go into A plus first. And A plus is really covering uh, help desk skills, support desk skills in the new world. I mean, our A plus has been around since the early 90s, but it's not your parents' um, A plus. It's right. no longer about PCs. You no longer need to know the weight of a stack of paper. Yeah. Which apparently was on the first exam back in the 90s. Ah, that would make sense. And, and how to troubleshoot a, a printer, you know, yes. a, a Xerox printer like those ones that were about, uh -huh. you know, eight feet long and took a manual that thick and took an engineer yep. to, to print. Um, how to troubleshoot a CD-ROM for oh. those younger members of our audience. Those were the discs. Yes, yes. We're taking on a little history lesson here. <laughs> wow. Um, a plus, though, is perfect because it allows you to support any device on the internet and troubleshoot it. And so that would include things like, um, um, you know, if someone calls up into a support desk and they're having problems with their device that they've brought to the office and maybe they're using Office 365 on their mobile system, you can now support someone doing that. Um, and then after that, that, that's about nine months into your career, people would have those knowledge, skills, and abilities at a support desk level. Next step in a career would be okay. Now that you've determined how all these devices work and, uh, and how to support them that are all connected to the internet, let's, let's learn about how the internet works. <laughs> let's learn about the routers, the, the switches, uh, the IPs, uh, addresses. Uh, let's learn about the uh, open system interconnect reference model, all seven layers of those. Let's learn how the network works, the internet. And so that's what Network Plus covers. And that's about the 18 month level into someone's career. Um, that covers things like network administrator. We'll go into job roles in a bit later. 
a bit later. Um, and then followed by that is Security Plus. And Security Plus is the flagship certification mm -hmm. of the cybersecurity career pathway. It's right. right in the middle and it finishes up our core skills. And Security Plus is, ge uh, is geared to the two year level of knowledge, skills, abilities, and tasks. And so that makes up the core of it. Notice mm -hmm. Security Plus ends core core skills because right. cybersecurity has to be built into every network now. It has to be built into every support desk system. And even people working uh, as support desk are usually the front lines of your cybersecurity incident response. They're a very important aspect. And so after that then, I'll just list them quickly, but we're actually gonna cover them later, mm -hmm. um, is we then go into the intermediate and the advanced level skills for cybersecurity. And so that's when we're looking at the intermediate skills, and those would be pen testing, which is pen test plus, which also covers vulnerability assessment and management, and then CISA plus, which is the uh, cybersecurity analyst certification to cover security analyst skills, and basically how we can use behavioral analytics in order to um, find anomalies on a network that indicate bad behavior. And that right there, of course, is because we're in the new phase of cybersecurity where we have to go on the offense with our defense. And certainly if you want to hear more about CISA Plus, we actually did a recent live broadcast, which will be part of this playlist. Perfect. And then it finishes it up at the, uh, and by the way, both CISA Plus and Pentest Plus are at around the three to four year level of knowledge, skills, and abilities, and tasks. Then the last one we look at is CASP, which is the CompT Advanced Security Practitioner. That's mostly covering uh, security architect skills, and um, that's at the five to 10 year level of knowledge, skills, and abilities. And so you can see um, the range, all the way from a survey course to what you wanna do to mastery in cybersecurity, all vendor neutral. So you're gonna be learning core concepts and skills so that you can go out in the job market and then take those the jobs that are using vendor-specific certs because you're going to know how to use them. You're going to know how to configure a Juniper firewall, for example, because you have just learned how a open source firewall works. And that's one of the beautiful things about teaching in a vendor-neutral environment, core skills and using open source software to teach because those skills that can then be applied really uh, well, you, it's like being a fish in water mm -hmm. when you understand the concept because you're like, I can use a Juniper router, I can use a Cisco router, you know, or switch. I can right. use um, a, anything to, to, to create the internet because the internet is ultimately a, a, a lot of standards. And if you understand those standards which are taught in our pathway, you understand how the internet works and you can do reverse engineering when you have understood how the internet works. And that is where cybersecurity ultimately uh, should lead. And I think that this leads really nicely into the idea of job roles. You know, CompTIA certifications are different in that we're certifying you to do a job as opposed to work on a system itself. Um, so they're very foundational, they're very adaptable. What kind of job roles do these certifications get people ready for? Um, well, each of these certifications is built using a job task analysis. And so it's a series where we'll ultimately we end up having thousands of people creating these certs. But each of these certs, could I could describe them to you using just job roles. Like for instance, A+, that's training for a support desk position, working in IT help desk. Um, Network Plus is for a network administrator. Security Plus is for a systems administrator, be helpful for them, a security administrator, as well as a network administrator. Because with Security Plus, you cannot secure a network unless you know how the network works. Very meta. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> how much wood could a woodchuck chuck? And then we also have, uh, when we get into the three to four year level, Pen Test Plus covers a penetration tester, ethical hacker, as well, as um, job roles into, uh, they get more specific as well. And so there are additional tasks in, in Pen Test Plus that will be covered um, in vulnerability assessment and management, as I said, penetration testing, uh, but it also covers some uh, more specific job roles that are more um, offensive tasks um, that you would do if you were in the Cyber Command, say doing uh, offensive uh, attacks. 
um, on an enemy. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, some of the people that helped us create Pen Test Plus uh, survived an Iranian state-sponsored attack. Um, mm -hmm. We had two people from the Las Vegas Sands Hotel uh, that were there, and so. Is that the aquarium one? It, the. Where they broke in through the smart aquarium? No, oh, no that's okay. Mandalay Bay. Oh. Yeah, no, this way. Las Vegas, man. You gotta oh. watch yourself. Oh, I went to, <laughs> I, I went to, we went to Def Con and Black Hat last year, and I just turned my phone off. Well, I'm not even gonna bother. Probably getting, for the best. Yes. <laughs> and so then, um, then we have CISA Plus, which is our security analyst certification. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine the number one job role for that is security uh, analyst. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm gonna talk about some of the new uh, job roles that are coming out of that. The information security job role is expanding. Um, and then also, uh, last is CAST, which I said is security architect. And uh, what that is, a lot of people don't understand the importance of a security architect. It would really be usually your lead tech in a department. They're gonna be in charge of uh, integrating business plans. So for instance, if you have a CISO who says, we are going to be under PCI DSS compliance, which is payment card information uh, data security standard, what that means is simply you need to encrypt your credit card numbers if you store them, for example. And you know when they're uh, over the wire, you've gotta make sure that it's encrypted uh, at, at rest as well. And so in order to do that, you would understand, okay, if I'm gonna implement PCI DSS, um, you know, what do I need to know? It brings this whole area of governance, um, regulatory and compliance uh, that we haven't seen before, not at this level. Um, and so that's a really interesting take. I, I'm gonna go a bit more into that later. Um, so, and then we get to, uh, as I said, CAS Plus, which is the security architect, and that rounds it out. That rounds it out at 10 years. Um, and so we're doing pretty good, and you can see I went through and listed every single job role mm -hmm. title for each of those. So if I took CAS Plus, I could go to indeed.com, right, type in security architect, and find a, a lot of jobs available. If you go to, uh, uh, if you go and put in um, you know, penetration tester or ethical hacker, for example, uh, you'll see there's a great deal of jobs there as well. And so uh, each of these are areas that we have created because we saw gaps in the industry. And that's an excellent point to end on as we move into these, this idea of why did we develop a cybersecurity career pathway? You talked about the job roles, they're expanding, and you go on to indeed.com, there's all sorts of jobs. So what does this pathway solve for? When we originally started the pathway, um, it was incomplete uh, because there were simply skills that weren't being demanded by employers. When I got here in 2014, we were focusing mainly on perimeter security. And that is the security um, methodology of the past, um, where we focused on creating a perimeter, a firewall around our network, and then we would put antivirus software on all the computers inside, and you were relatively safe. Move forward to the hacks of 2013 and 2014 when the advanced persistent threat came to the public's knowledge. When Target got hit, we all saw our credit cards, if we had Target, were probably stolen. And it was ended up being 140 million of them. So almost everyone in the United States was impacted. We have the Office of Personnel Management where we had all of our military employees' uh, data you know, released, um, including their personal information. So what we realized is we had to change our perspective and start looking at cybersecurity almost more to, gosh, like a practically a managerial level to a certain degree, where you now have to start managing the traffic inside your network and you have to analyze it using new tools like security information and event management tools like QRadar or Splunk um, and monitor that inside traffic because now the enemy's inside your network, mostly through social engineering, actually. But right now, um, it's very difficult to stop those attacks. And so we had to, new job roles were developed. In fact, security analyst job role, after those attacks in 2016, the security analyst job role became the fastest growing job role in the history of the United States Bureau of Labor Statistics. The history of the BLS in the US security analysts, which CISA Plus covers, um, was required because of those huge attacks. We realized we have this gaping hole in cybersecurity. 
And we have to begin to fill that hole with the proper skills. What are those skills? Turns out security analyst, the other one, penetration testing and vulnerability assessment and management. And this is all around the concept of you have to go on the offense with your defense. You have to be monitoring constantly. You have to be, as a pen tester, attacking your own network. And in the process of attacking your own network, you learn how a hacker thinks. Because in order to defend yourself, you need to think like a hacker. And that's what Pen Test Plus helps. And certainly it seems to follow the trend of the greater IT industry. We went from a model in which a lot of IT service providers were break-fix guys. You broke your computer, you took it to a, a desk, they would do stuff and give it back to you. And now we have all sorts of persistent providers who are monitoring your network and making sure things are set up right. And it's not as simple as it used to be. Not as, not as simple as the good old days. <laughs> That's right. So we've talked a lot about how things have changed in even the past five years since you've started your time here at CompTIA. And you know, we're on the, the brink of 2020. Things are certainly going to continue to change and evolve. Let's look forward a little bit. What kind of trends are you seeing in the industry and how is CompTIA responding to them? Right, um, the trends are impacting our certifications um, through the job task analysis process. Um, because in that process, we bring together um, well, ultimately thousands of people to help uh, determine their job roles for a specific job role. For instance, for a security analyst, we, we worked with over 2,200 security analysts throughout the globe in order to define those uh, exam objectives. Because exam objectives ultimately are the tasks, you know, the, as I said, the knowledge, skills, abilities, and tasks that someone in that job role would be doing. And so if you learn those skills, you will basically have the foundation for a job um, in, in that area. And um, can we go back to your question again? Yeah, real quick? so how's the industry changing and how are we changing with it? What kind of trends do you see on the horizon for 2020? Yeah, so um, this is all hot off the press with Security Plus. Um, I just did a pre-JTA survey with, uh, we sent it out to every Security Plus uh, every Security Plus certificate holder over the last four years. I sent a survey to them to find out, you know, how are their jobs changed since they took Security Plus? And uh, what I have found, what we found through this survey, we had 500 qualified, you know, folks uh, return um, their feedback. What they said is the cloud and cloud security are impacting them the most. The, the top two things were, that are impacting our Security Plus certified um, certificate holders is um, also threats, attacks, and vulnerabilities. So it's those two things, cloud security, threats, attacks, and vulnerabilities. This makes a lot <coughs> of sense. Number one, we all know we've been moving to the cloud for several years, and, uh, and now we're finding is most <coughs> companies, you know, are gonna have a hybrid environment probably where they have a server on, on ground mm -hmm. and then uh, they use the cloud for other services, and that's gonna be their, their network. And so our security analyst, our um, security plus, uh, you know, members are out there, and they're saying, "Wow, we're having to, you know, it's a lot of these skills are the same, but we're now having to do with them in the cloud, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of policies built around them. We're finding 71 percent of all the cybersecurity changes in the cloud are due to policy. Why? Because you're working with a third party, and so you're always going to have to ensure that your uh, security policies are matching their security policies and you have to have a, it can be more difficult at times depending on what you want to do. Right. Uh, and you may even need permission for certain tasks um, through a, a key you know, point uh, broker that you're working with. So you have to uh, be um, uh, flexible and <laughs> we had to teach those skills. And so, uh, and so I'd imagine we're gonna see those. This will be proved once the job task analysis process is finished for uh, Security Plus. But the other thing is threats, attacks, and vulnerabilities, and that's just because there are more of them. <laughs> <laughs> right, you build a better mousetrap, the mouse gets smarter. Yeah, it was that simple. Right, and so, so we have to get know. smarter too. And have a vocabulary around it as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the other area I wanna talk about is the job task analysis we just had for a security analyst. And that has been fascinating. Um, and so I've been able to look at the draft exam objectives 
And the next version of SISA Plus is going to come out just this April, April of uh, 2020. Four months out. <laughs> yeah. And, and the Security Plus, 601 is going to come out in November of 2020. So look at that. SISA Plus in April, Security in November. It's going to be a busy year. Um, with SISA Plus, though, some fascinating tasks, at least if you're you know, into such things. <laughs> what kind of things do you see there? Do we know yet? Or do you yes. have to stay tuned for no, it? No, no, I do. I can tell you right now. One of the areas that's impacting as a security analyst is automated incident response. Um, this is, uh, you know, it, it, tend to, um, it tends to impact more and more security analysts. One of the problems that security analysts have had all along is having too many false positives. Right. Like I was at, um, we were with a, a company with SecureWorks, an accounting firm in uh, Austin, Texas, and they had 90,000 security alerts a day. And their security guys could no. get through maybe, you know, I think 200 of them a day. It was, but that was, not, that was the norm, you know, n not the exception for security analysts. So it would only make sense that we've come to automation. Um, it, it's it, it, with our incident response. And it can start with something as simple as um, just invoking a rule that might, for instance, check the destination IP address to see its reliability level. If it's a reliable system, you can probably make that, um, you know, that's no longer gonna be a false positive because it's a system that is a trusted system with a high reliability rate, it's hardened in other words. So you can then throw out that false positive. Uh, but then it can go to far more complicated uh, arenas like, um, for instance, um, uh, Splunk. I uh, the, the the product manager for Splunk is mm -hmm. is on uh, one of my advisory committees, and he was telling us about Phantom. And uh, so Splunk bought Phantom. And if you didn't know, Splunk is the number one sim according to the Gardner's um, Magic Quadrant, um, and followed by Logarithm and uh, IBM's Q Radar. And we actually have an agreement with IBM Q Radar. They use SISA Plus, the exam I'm talking about right now, as a mandatory requirement for their Q Radar certification. Um, but um, HK was telling me at Splunk about how they bought Phantom. And Phantom is an appliance that can sit in front of their SIM, Splunk. And it actually orchestrates and automates incident response. That's called SOAR, S-O-A-R. All SOAR allows them to do is it allows basically um, the uh, phantom to basically sends calls to, um, to the SIM, to Splunk, and it's able to uh, get rid of a lot of those false positives before they ever make it to the security analyst. And it takes a, care of a lot of those 90,000 false positives I was telling you about, or those 90,000 security alerts they did, because it's quite possible that you know, out of those 90,000, you know, 89,000, you know, 500 of them could be eliminated, uh, thus making the security analyst job possible. This isn't about replacing humans. This is about actually getting the job done because the job's not getting done right now. It's humanly impossible. So only the best configured security information event management systems are actually catching. Um, you know, the, 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 these anomalies I was telling you about, like Target Corporation, I believe in their entire worldwide system, uh, just in their SIM, they only get about 200 uh, security alerts a day. That's for their entire worldwide system. Mind you, they have threat hunters, and that's another position I'm gonna talk about, be a great intro, or a segue into that. Mm -hmm. But threat hunters are used. So th let's say their security information event management system only gets 200 security alerts a day worldwide. Right? There might be other things happening. That's why another position, so automation, which we've just covered, is a thing that's changing security analysts. But the other thing that's uh, affecting uh, security analysts then is, um, uh, is that whole concept of you know, not only automation, but having to hunt for threats outside of the SIM. So I told you we've got our SIM, we've got 200 alerts, but they also have people looking everywhere else throughout the network, even online, trying to find predictive analysis. And these, and they want to find um, basically attacks before they get to your network, which is a big part of threat intelligence as well. So, and there's even another change, GRC. You know what GRC is? If you don't, you need to know it. It's governance, 
Oh, yes. Regulatory and compliance. It's happening. It's happening in a big way. And it's really affecting everyone's jobs in cybersecurity right now. And that was one of the things we, we learned. There's actually going to be a domain on GCR and uh, how to comply to it um, You know, as a security analyst. You would need to be aware of these compliance issues. Like You could be under PCI DSS. You might be under HIPAA. Um, mm -hmm. So you're going to be involved in that process as a security analyst. Um, and you're going to be responsible for reporting uh, specific security controls that are probably being you know, managed by either your CISO or uh, you might have a security manager on your team uh, managing the GRC. But as an IT pro, uh, you're going to have to be reporting, 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 and um, you know, what you find. And it has to be then documented and, uh, and submitted to usually some kind of regulatory agency. So you're going to be playing a role in that. You need to understand it. And uh, so those are some of the really big changes that, that, that I have seen uh, coming out of those uh, exam objectives so far. And I can't wait uh, because I think that in April, I think that when we start telling people about the new job roles that are being covered by CISA Plus, I think people are actually going to want to come back and take the exam. Right. Because they're going to want to learn what threat hunting is. They're mm -hmm. going to learn about being a compliance analyst. Uh, they're going to want to learn, um, uh, you know, about automated incident response. I mean, these are major changes, and more about GRC, like I was saying, uh, which would be, I mean, some departments now have a compliance analyst just specifically for that role, and it's going to continue to uh, affect you. And plus, as an IT worker, did you know that you can be punished if you end up uh, making a mistake? Like, for instance, if you view an unauthorized directory that you weren't supposed to see, um, you could be put on administrative leave. Uh, you could be terminated from your position. This is not, this is no joke. Um, it's come down to that. And so you have to understand it. And that's why, you know, we're finding a whole domain to GRC in CISA Plus, the next version coming out. I find that fascinating. I've been in IT for a quarter of a century. And I am so excited by this. Well, and the stakes are high, so that makes sense. Yeah. These are the, these are the things that govern our way of life, our ability to make purchases and vote and all sorts of things that are pretty central to day-to-day -day existence. So it makes sense that these certifications are becoming more sophisticated and are becoming more nuanced and, well, as a result, more regulated. Yes. Jen, do we have any questions from our audience? All right, never mind then. Uh, <laughs> is there anything else that you want to add about the cybersecurity career pathway, 2020, the exams, something that I didn't ask you about? Um, I just want to tell you that uh, CompTIA is doing a ton of research to fill skills gaps right now in the industry. And you know, we're targeting um, you know, the next generation of gaps right now. And so we're filling those gaps uh, by updating our exams every three years. And so we're finding the new job roles are automatically going into the new certs as they're updated every three years. If I were to look ahead and say, you know, where does the industry need to go? I'd say um, we probably need the software development community to begin uh, becoming um, more secure through uh, secure software development uh, best practices. Also, we see the DevOps teams, which is the, essentially the process of developing software. Um, we're seeing them adopt models that are SEC DevOps, like security and development operations, or you know, DevSecOps. It's a symbolic, but they're actually adding the title, uh, you know, SEC to DevOps. It's because the networks have become more secure over the last five years as we've dumped um, you know billions of dollars into them to get our systems and networks secure. Now, what I hear is software, and this is from you know, our research, and what I hear as I'm saying, because I'm actually talking to you know, hundreds of, of subject matter experts who do these job roles, um, you know, they are finding um, that software is now becoming the major problem on networks as opposed to the systems. Only makes sense, but you know, so software developers and the software development industry needs to get on this. Right. This is really important, and I, I hope they do. We're trying to influence the software industry as much as possible. Hackers will always find the soft spot. 
Yes. And they're finding it between interconnections between software points. They could use uh, connection points, um, for example, on systems. Um, and it's actually the software integration that is usually um, exposing um, the problems. And a lot of that is because they're not doing the appropriate testing. And so we actually found the fourth largest audience coming to Security Plus right now are software engineers, Java developers, C Sharp developers. Can you believe that? They're coming to Security Plus because they want to learn how to integrate cybersecurity into the software development life cycle. They want to know what they need to be aware of. They're now the fourth largest audience, software engineers, coming to take Security Plus. Incredible. And I think what I'm hearing is we're nowhere close to a saturation point on this. Cybersecurity is only going to grow in the next one, five, ten years. Uh, that's what we believe, too. And uh, over the long term, we might see cybersecurity roles turning more towards uh, management roles. And, uh, and then there's going to be infrastructure technicians who are implementing those controls. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it rolls, turns out in the next five to ten years. Absolutely. And stay tuned, and we will be more than happy to keep you updated on what's happening in those next five to ten years. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe so you can get notifications for all of these videos. And let us know in the comments section what you want us to tackle next, whether it's in a live broadcast or a video. We're happy to develop content that you guys want to consume. So until next time, I'm Kelly from CompTIA. Thanks for tuning in.